Okay, we're going to skip uh, slide 19 and go on to 20. Uh, huge economic growth in the late 1990s was due to prospecting on up-and-coming internet companies. Uh, people wanted to get in on the, the basement, the bottom floor. Uh, most were never profitable. Amazon.com posted its first annual profit. Since going public in 1997, their first profit was in 2003. So it's pretty good that they didn't give up. Um, and then we have uh, major internet backbone providers, WorldCom, Global Crossing, are struggling. Uh, for this, just remember that Amazon started in 1997 and did not make a profit until 2003. That's all you need to remember about that. Moving on to slide 21. Um, computers can now contact each other through the internet. Public files on computers can be read by remote user. Uh, we've got the uh, the HTTP Hypertext Transfer Protocol. Uh, that's pretty much repeat. And then how to make a web page. Excuse me. I promise you I'm not sick and you can't get sick from this video tape. Um, Define the two basic steps required in making a web page. Uh, you create an HTML file and you upload the file to the server, which is through the file transfer protocol, the FTP. So basically, I write my code and then I upload it to the, in to the internet and there it is. It appears immediately. Uh, it's not easy to write the code, but today you have software for that. You even have websites you can go to, and they, they have everything. You just it's, It has a design for you, or you pick the design you want, and then you say, okay, there's a picture over here. Let's see, I like to put that picture in there, and, it, and it's done for you. It's pretty easy. Um, web documents are text files with .html after them. Um, and these text files have HTML tags in them. Um, just remember that HTML is hypertext marking language. Uh, and then this is what some of it looks like uh, on slide 25. Uh, you start with, um, like you see this P here. Uh, to begin a paragraph, and you follow it with slash p. That's ending the paragraph. Um, and the the p goes at the beginning of a paragraph, and the slash p at the end of a paragraph. Uh, you do that with everything. It, it starts with a letter in those two triangular things. How do I do that? There we go. I don't know what those things are called. Uh, and then a slash uh, at the end to end it. Um, <clears throat> so here, here is the paragraph about something. Here is the second paragraph. All right, what it will look like down at the bottom here. Here is the paragraph about something, and here is the second paragraph. And that's exactly what it looks like. Um, and these are some important, essential HTML tags. Uh, the document has to begin with the HTML. Then you have the body, and then you have H1, which is your header or headline. <clears throat> it's in a big type. Uh, H2 is a little smaller. H3 is a little smaller. Uh, you usually don't go any smaller than H5. And then the P starts a paragraph, and then the, you see the body starts with body, and then it ends with slash body, and then the end of the document is slash HTML. On to slide 28. Uh, if you opened that page in Netscape Navigator, it would look like this. Here's a header in big type. Here's a paragraph. Um, we used to have something called View Page Source. It allows you to see the HTML behind a page. This was really cool in the beginning 
because if I saw that somebody was doing something really interesting in their web page and I couldn't figure out how they were writing the code, I could go to view page source and look through all of this writing, this text, and find the place. And I could copy the code and insert it into a page of mine. Well, we can't do that quite as easily th these days. Somebody put an end to that. Um, anyway, it's not necessary to know that. We were just able to do it before. And like I said, the file transfer protocol uh, was the FTP program. You don't need to know all of this, okay? It's just something for your interest. Um, again, 31, nothing important. Uh, Netscape Composer was, I want you to, rem I want you to know what this is, WYSIWYG. It is W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G, and it means what you see is what you get. And so we would say to our, our friends who were coding it the same way, and you say, well, is it WYSIWYG? Uh, WYSIWYG? And somebody would say, yeah. So it's what you see is what you get. Um, then we go on to 33. We started to get... Um, software to help you actually um, make a website and Dreamweaver was the top one. Um, I, I bought it, I spent hundreds of dollars for it and I never got into it because I changed course. I got into uh, grad school and um, so I could do what I'm doing now. But it was an excellent site building tool uh, and we move on to the last slide. Uh, Microsoft Front Page was another all-in-one program like Dreamweaver. It used proprietary tags that can't be read by some browsers like Netscape. Uh, it used non-standard HTML and style sheets, and that's old stuff. Okay, we we just you don't have to know that anymore. You can develop a website knowing nothing about what's going on in the background. But I am so glad. Uh, it's, it's like um, uh, the difference between knowing how to tinker in the engine of your car and taking your car to a mechanic and having him tinker behind the scenes. Uh, when you can do it yourself, uh, you don't have to pay somebody else to do it. Um, and you can make little changes in it. You can improve it and that sort of thing uh, as things happen. But if something goes wrong in your car, you have to take it in and let's say you get it back home and you drive it for a day and still not right, you have to take it back and that sort of thing. It's always better to know the guts of something. So I'm going to end this right here and wish you a very, very wonderful summer.